Good afternoon. Welcome to another edition of Mead Live. Uh, we have a fantastic program today. We're going to be looking at waste to energy. So this is the process of collecting uh, city waste, solid waste, and converting it into energy for electricity generation. Um, a very important topic. It fits within the regional agenda for energy diversification but also within the agenda for uh, improved waste management and moving towards um, a zero carbon uh, uh, circular economy that will reduce carbon emissions. Um, as always with Mead Live, um, we want this to be interactive. We have um, a dashboard here that can take your questions. Please submit your questions as we go because this is an important topic and I know that there has been a lot of interest uh, in attending the webinar today. I would just like to introduce the panel. We have an absolutely stellar cast of panellists with us today from the, the leading figures in waste to energy in the region. Starting at the far end of the panel, uh, we have Jean-Claude Nasser. Uh, Jean-Claude is the Senior Vice President for Power Generation, uh, Gas and Power at Siemens Middle East. Welcome, Jean-Claude. Thank you. Next to Jean-Claude, we have Khalid al huraimel Now, Khalid is the Group Chief Executive Officer at BIA. BIA is an inc incredibly important uh, company in this waste to energy story. They are from Sharjah. We will hear about BIA in just a moment from Khalid, but they are the leading player uh, in waste to energy in the region and also in waste management, I think. Thank so, two, uh, two parts to the story there. And last but not least, uh, we have Yusuf Al Ali. Now, Yusuf is the acting executive director for Mazdar Clean Energy. So, Mazdar, the big investment uh, vehicle from Abu Dhabi, investing in renewables mm -hmm. and clean energy. So, welcome to all three of you. Uh, Jean Claude, let's start with you to set up the, the conversation for today. Why are the Middle East utilities looking at waste to energy? What, you know, what, what are the statistics uh, and the strategies? Uh, to tackle with some of these issues? Well, first of all, I mean, thank you, Richard, for this opportunity to discuss a very important topic, waste of energy. And it's really great to be with Mazda and BIA, two key players in the sustainability world. Uh, it's an honor to be with you here, guys. And uh, I'd like to start with, uh, first of all, as far as waste of energy, really it has three advantages that I'm sure we'll discuss in a little more details later on. But one is the fact that, you know, you are reducing as a way to reduce the volume of waste that's going to landfills. And number two is you're taking that waste and using it as an alternative fuel. And, and the fact is that uh, you can use that to produce electricity, you can use it in desalination plant, you can use it in district cooling. For example, uh, what's being generated as solid waste in, in the Gulf countries alone, it's around 100 million metric tons per year. And, and if picture this, this is around 200 uh, 200 times heavier than Burj Khalifa. I mean, that's wow. a lot of waste. So 100 million metric tons of waste in the GCC. In GCC alone. Every year. Yeah. Yes, every wow. year. And, and, uh, and uh, if you look at the UAE, you find that one point, between 1.76 and 2.3 kilograms of municipal waste are being generated per each person per day. So what are we doing with this waste? And of course, as uh, uh, you know, as we know, many countries that are basically taking that waste mm. and sending it to the landfills. So the, what does that create? It creates, of course, a challenge for us from a health perspective, from an environmental perspective, from even the potential to create pollution in groundwater. So really, waste to energy is about turning this challenge to an opportunity. And I believe this is where our partners here are, are, are working on and, and their future project of waste to energy plants, you know, to, to take that and, and, and build these plants so to... The, yeah. the, the, I, I asked the question about why the region's utilities are looking at waste to energy. Now, the utilities are responsible for providing water yeah. and electricity, but what you have also described there is the, the waste management side of it, which isn't the utilities that do that, is it? Or it's not the electricity companies anyway, it's, it's the municipalities. Correct. So, so Correct. it's not just about utilities, it's also about management of the urban yeah. environment and the yes. cities. So I think there, there's two benefits here, right? One is helping the municipality to deal, manage the, the waste, and as well as trying to prove something from it that utilities can benefit okay. from, which is like, ele such as electricity. Okay. Now, I, I, I want to get, bring in um, uh, Khaled and Yusuf into the conversation, but you are from Siemens. So Siemens 
uh, you know, one of the great energy technology companies of the world, and presumably you are involved in waste to energy all around the world, and so you can bring in some case studies about lessons learned from Europe or you know, other parts of the world. Maybe if I can give an overall picture of where we fit into the technology first. Okay. And, uh, and, you know, so what you have basically, uh, you know, there are proven technology for waste to energy, and one of them is the incineration technology. And this is where you, you, you bring in this, the, the waste and you pre-treat it, and then you actually put it into a boiler, and the boiler heats up this waste to yeah. create steam. And this is where we come in as, yeah. as Siemens with our steam turbine technology okay. to take that steam and to convert it to power or to generate power. Okay, so we'll get, we'll get yeah. into detail on the yeah. technology, mm -hmm. but what you're describing is there are sort of stages, different technologies at different yes. stages. Yes. Very important topic, and we'll go into it in a moment. I want to bring Khaled in uh, just for a second. So Jean-Claude just now talked about um, the, the, the waste uh, management side of it, as well as the energy generation side of it. I know that's where BIA comes from in the mm -hmm. first place. So can you tell us a little bit about BIA, who, who BIA is or what BIA is? Mm -hmm. and, but also, I think the important part of the story for BIA is Sharjah. So Sharjah has this strategy to be a, a zero waste city and um, has been forward thinking in, these, um, the, uh, in the circular economy discussion yeah. for many years. So tell us about BIA and tell us a little bit about Sharjah, how we got to this position. Okay. Thank you, Richard, first of all. It's a pleasure to be here with... Uh, with both uh, John Claude and uh, Youssef. Uh, BIA uh, is a UAE-based company that was founded in Sharjah uh, about 10 years ago. Uh, and the vision of BIA is looking at pioneering sustainable quality of life in the MENA region and beyond. We started tackling the problem of waste initially. This was an imme immediate problem. As John Claude mentioned, uh, the highest generation of waste per capita in the world is here in the GCC. So it's almost 2.5 kilograms per person per day. So this was the immediate problem we tackled. However, today, BIA is diversified, and we're looking at energy, we're looking at technology, we're looking at transport. We do many things, air quality, but focusing on waste and waste to energy. So when we started, uh, most of the waste in the Emirate of Sharjah was going to landfill. Over 70% of the waste uh, in 2009 was going to landfill. Today... Uh, so can I, if I extend yeah. that, so you said that the GCC has some of the highest yes. uh, waste, waste generation. generation per capita. Yeah. And in Sharjah, you're saying 70% is going to landfill. So yeah. presumably bringing those two concepts together, yeah. the GCC has some of the highest For proportion sure. of For waste sure. going to landfill. And a lot of it is going to landfill. So, so we see uh, the whole region now is, is taking steps now to resolve that. Uh, we started that journey about 10 years ago. And today, already in Sharjah, we've achieved the highest diversion rate away from landfill in the Middle East today. Today, 76% of the waste in Sharjah is not going to landfill. Where is it going? Uh, it's going to, it's being recovered, recycled, treated, uh, and only uh, uh, around 20, uh, 26% or so uh, is going to landfill. Uh, and that is where so it's gone from 70% down to 26%. Yes. So well what done. we've done in, in, in this period of 10 years, uh, we've created a company that's the first fully integrated, integrated waste management company. Uh, so what that means is we do the waste collection, the street cleaning, we manage the landfill, we do the segregation of waste, and now converting that waste into energy. So we've built several different facilities. We started with the infrastructure. So uh, just um, before we go into the details, so BIA is, pri is a private company. It's not Sharjah it's government. A, uh, it's, BIA is a public-private partnership. Okay. So it's owned by, by both the public sector and the private sector. And also we believe this is also a model for success in the region, uh, in this sector. A PPP model has helped us to where we are today. Okay. And so you, you, you come, we're talking about waste to energy today, but yes. your journey has, over the past decade has been from waste management, sort of providing yes. the municipal services to collect. To and, collect, and segregate, re recycle. Yeah. Uh, and we've put the target for Sharjah to reach zero waste. So to reach zero waste, this is where, again, wa where the waste to energy facility comes in. So your core focus for this conversation about waste to energy is actually yeah. on the waste management side, yes. and waste to energy is one output of, of that thought process. Yes. Okay, so let, if I can bring the conversation to you, so thank you for uh, your patience, Yusuf. Now, you are the acting executive director for um, clean energy at Mazdar. Mazdar is you know, well known as a... Uh, investment vehicle and an incubator for clean tech. 
in this space. You're also working in joint venture with BIA to develop uh, waste to energy in Sharjah, but we will talk about later uh, other investments. Can you tell me a little bit about your job as Clean Energy Director at mm -hmm. Mazda? What, do, are you investigating new technology? You're investing in them. Mm -hmm. And then how did it come together, this partnership with, uh, with BIA? Uh, as, as you rightly mentioned, Mazda, since the inception in 2006, focused on uh, development and investments in sustainable and clean uh, technologies. So biz uh, Mazda have two businesses today. The first business is the sustainable real estate through the development of, uh, of Masdar City, which goes on very successfully. The other part of our business, which also considered the, the, the majority of our investment, is the investments in clean technologies. And what we mean with the clean technologies here, we mean renewable energy that consists of uh, solar, photovoltaic, solar thermal, wind, all different types of winds and other clean technologies like, uh, for example, uh, the project that we implemented in 2015 on, on the carbon capture and sequestration, and the waste to energy project which uh, we are pursuing now with our partner, strategic partner, BIA. So it's an important part of our uh, business portfolio is to focus on expanding further on waste to energy. Considering the experience of Mazda in, in, uh, in striking uh, successful bankable structure for, uh, for energy projects. We implemented the same in waste to energy and in order to complement the experience required for the waste to energy, we elected to have strategic partnership with, uh, with BIA. BIA have long experience in managing waste, dealing with waste, also in, in, uh, in uh, doing marketing and uh, recycle for important uh, element of the waste, plastics, uh, expensive uh, metals. So to complement this, we decided to have a strategic partnership with, uh, with BIA. And is that just for, so the strategic partnership between Mazda and BIA, that is just for one plant or is it a, no, a, a bigger? It's, it's wider. We're talking about strategic partnership that focus uh, on investing in waste to energy projects worldwide with a focus on our region. Okay, so, so BIA will be going international with Mazda or? through this partnership? Yes, uh, this, this company good. is the uh, Emirates Waste to Energy company that was established jointly with uh, Mastar and now building the first plant in Sharjah. Okay, so we will come into that in, yeah. in a moment uh, in, in some detail, I hope. Uh, in terms of Mastar's investment strategy here, so you, are you investing in the waste collection, waste management, or are you just investing in the energy side of it? So we will be focusing more as Mazda. Our strategy is to focus on, on, on the waste to energy plant itself. However, uh, through the waste to energy, uh, through Emirates Waste to Energy Company, through our joint venture, and having BIA as a major partner in that, in that company allows us also to take further scope, bigger scope, uh, to provide the required services that uh, the client may ask for. So must, uh, the, the, the company we have today, through the, the joint venture, the sponsors, we can do more than the plant itself. Okay. So we are starting with, with the Sharjah Waste to Energy project. However, the ambition is to go further, and we are looking at the different uh, potential uh, projects that are going to be announced in the region. Okay. So we heard a lot about this market. It didn't pick up yet. You know, it reminds me with the clean energy, with renewable energy in 2006. It took, took a while until the market mm. picked up. And I think we are at, at, that, at that moment now with the waste to energy project. So one, one of the factors in solar, at least, was the, the, the cost competitiveness coming down. So it, th there was that sort of period of sort of uh, seeding investment in solar. And now the UAE and Saudi as well is now leading the world in terms of investment. Mm -hmm. From the waste to energy point of view, are we at that starting position of the sort of early investments and you can see I think it? I think the, the, the waste to energy technology, if you look at the mature technology, you know, the, the, the incineration technology, it reached a very good uh, maturity stage in terms of pricing. But it's all about how you look at the, the cost of uh, waste to energy. It's not only about the cost of electricity generated. You need to uh, have in mind also the cost of avoiding this waste, the cost of... Uh, uh, freeing that land, the landfill from uh, from that waste. Also, you have to consider, you have to to have in mind also the environmental uh, issues yeah. associated with uh, with the waste. You know, today uh, in many locations in this region, these landfills became very close to residential area. Yeah. 
And when it was planned at that at early stage, many years ago, when it was decided to have these uh, landfills uh, at certain locations, nobody anticipated this huge growth in these cities. So it's, it's a real problem that needs uh, somebody to look at it on a holistic view. And if you look at, uh, if you look at it and you consider the different aspects of cost, it really makes sense. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Yusuf. Thank you for all yeah. of your comments. Jean-Claude, did you want to come in there? No, if I may add also, I, I think, yes, it, it's, it's picking up, and, and, but it's good that uh, in this region, you know, the waste of energy is, is becoming a priority for a lot of the governments. As a matter of fact, as uh, maybe Khaled mentioned, uh, some of the Emirates here, they have uh, a very uh, uh, aggressive target, I should say, to go to zero waste to landfills yeah. by end of 2020, which is very good. I mean, this is really a good proof that the... Is, is, that, I mean, yeah. is that achievable? Zero waste by 2020, so that's next year. And uh, you said we've come from 70% to 26%. Yeah. I mean, that's a big... I, I think here in the UAE, the UAE national agenda has put a target by 2021 that 75% of waste should be diverted from the landfill. Okay. Uh, but each emirate has its own targets also. Ah, I see. But yeah. there is a UAE agenda. Uh, uh, in Sharjah, our target to reach zero waste is when this when our plant will be commissioned, which is expected to be commissioned in 2021 now. I mean, is, is that realistic? I mean, th there must be some waste that can't be recycled or uh, Well, it, uh, for, for us, it's, it's almost achieving zero waste uh, because we're already at 76%. Uh, and with the capacity of this plant, we will, be, we will be hitting zero waste to landfill by 2021. Okay, if I can just, on this point, um, uh, uh, Khaled, um, what type of waste uh, this is a question that has come in from, um, I can't see which country it's come in from, but I think it's from uh, internationally. What type of waste are going to take part in waste to energy? So, you know, you, you said okay. zero waste. Yes. It can't so, all be for electricity. Okay, so, so what we're, to give you an example of what we're doing in Sharjah. Uh, now, yes, BIA operates across the Emirates. We don't just operate in Sharjah, but in Sharjah, uh, we manage all the waste. So all we collect all types of waste, and we treat all types of waste. But before it goes into uh, uh, the waste to energy facility, we try to recover as much value. So there's a process that it has to go through. So we have, for example, a material recovery facility that takes all the municipal solid waste, and we try to recover as much value, whether it's plastic, cardboard, aluminum, before taking, uh, today, whatever is not recovered goes to landfill. Plus, we have a tire recycling facility that, that actually recycles all the tires. Uh, we have a construction and diminution waste facility. Today here in the UAE, there's a lot of construction, a lot of development. So we're actually able to recover over 95% of the construction waste. Only 5% goes to landfill. Uh, and what do you, so for things like from construction yes. waste where there might be yeah. steel or... Yes. Uh, what happens? With, do, do you um, sell that back to yes, the so, recycling companies? Yes, so there, there is there is a, a, there is a big market for these raw materials, uh, so uh, and these commodities. So we recover all this waste uh, and we sell it uh, to an open market, and uh, we have an also an industrial uh, liquid uh, 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 treatment facility. We have uh, metal uh, shredding and segregation facility. So we have several facilities. And what cannot be recycled uh, or, or uh, recovered goes to landfill. Okay. And, and that is what will go to the waste to energy. So if I can just ask you then, there, there are obviously lots of parts to this yes. story. And I'll come on to the technology in just a moment. Yeah. But let's, let's describe the, the, the parts for yes. waste to energy. So you have the, you know, the, you collection. Have the waste collection, yes. the separation, the incineration. Can you, can you describe the stages well, uh, and then first, who does the of course, First, it's at the, at the collection. At the collection now in the region, especially here in the UAE, we've already started segregation at source. So uh, normally that is done by a municipality, but in Sharjah, BIA is doing that. Uh, BIA is doing that, yes. So, so in, in the Emirate of Sharjah, we handle the whole chain. Right. So, so we collect the waste in all the residential areas. There is the green and blue bins for recyclable material and non-recyclable material. We collect all this waste, we take it to the landfill, and then we have a waste management complex in, uh, in Sharjah where all the facilities, including the landfill, are located uh, uh, in that location. And then the waste goes through that process of uh, recovery. And our waste to energy facility is also being built in that location. 
So, as I said, we have a material recovery facility, which is the largest in the Middle East. We have a tire recycling facility, a construction uh, and demolition waste recycling facility. We have a medical waste, also uh, oh, really? treatment facility. Uh, and we have uh, an, uh, recently an industrial uh, liquid uh, waste uh, treatment facility. So, we're building all these facilities to recover as much waste out and before goes to landfill. So, all of that... Um, that what you've described is specialist waste that can be yes. presumably recycled into yes. those industries. The stuff that goes to waste to energy, then that yes. is the stuff that has no recyclable, uh, yes. recyclable yes. element. Yes, so we, where we cannot recover anymore, okay. that will go. And today, it's, it's uh, as I said earlier, we're recovering already 76%. So the balance is now today going to the landfill. Okay. Uh, and by 2021, it will not go to the landfill okay. anymore. It will go to this new facility. And so if we now follow this, the chain down the waste yeah. to energy, so the next stage is the incineration, the, the generation of heat, yes. I guess. Yes. And then uh, I'll come on to the technology bits in a moment. After that, you have the, the, the steam creation. And, the, and, the, and, then the and so the, the, relation, the, the, the waste to energy company that you have established with Mazda, yes. that does the... Um, incineration does it and it does the heat the electricity it does generation. it owns the, the plant uh, yeah. it owns the plant mm. but who, who so my question is I think w BIA is a supplier so, so, of the, so the fuel okay so BIA provides uh, BIA will provide the feedstock which is the waste uh, and then there is the output the power is then sold on to the okay. uh, the in charge which would be the CWA, the charge electricity and okay. water authority so BIA puts the the feedstock in which is the waste and yes. the utility which is the charger <coughs> electricity and water yes. authority and you have to have agreements on both sides and so as a as a um, PPP company yes. you have a, a a feedstock supply agreement with BIA and then you have a off take Correct. agreement with CWA. Correct. fantastic thank you uh, can we talk a little bit now, Jean-Claude, about the, the, the technology part? So we've, we've brought the story up to the incineration element, yeah. and then we know that there's that part to create the heat, to create the steams yes. in, the, in the boilers, and then that powers the turbines, and then you feed into the grid. So who does the different technologies, and what technologies are being used? Well, I, I think, I, exactly. I mean, whatever it's, let's, if I can call it the leftover or the non-recyclable, that goes into a boiler, and and uh, and of course there are several boiler manufacturers, including Siemens. We also uh, make boilers, but it goes into a boiler. But maybe this type of boiler might be more specific towards dealing with the waste, and uh, there are several uh, suppliers to that. But we come in right after that because that you know when you are lighting up this uh, or or, or uh, burning this. Uh, so non-reusable or non-recyclable waste, it go, it, you know, you're creating heat and, and you have the water that could be converted to steam and we come in with our steam turbine and our steam turbine is connected to the generator and of course it produces electricity. So we are, this is where we play as, as, a, as, a, as Siemens with more than 100 years actually of technology experience in, in the steam turbines. And uh, not only this, I mean, we don't stop this. We also provide the, the, the equipment that's used, the technology to transmit these, uh, this power that's being generated also uh, through the transmission line and through our substation technology as well. So we, we, so we provide both the generation side and the transmission side of the technology. Can I ask, from an if efficiency point of view, you know, a lot of the focus in the region over the past few years has been on um, becoming more efficient and using technology to drive uh, greater efficiency levels. Yeah. Is it more efficient to have one big central waste to energy plant with a centralized you know, collection of waste yeah. and, and, and or, or are lots of little distributed plants more efficient? I mean, I don't yeah. know if this is a question for BIA or for Siemens, but w w what would be the, the, the better model? From a steam turbine perspective, of course, I mean, the, 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 the bigger the, the steam turbine, the more efficient because you know, you're generating more electricity with okay. with one uh, particular plant, uh, you know, versus you know having smaller one. But we are we pr we tailor make the the, okay. the our steam turbine, you know, depending on the requirement of the project. Okay. So we can provide you with a smaller to a bigger size uh, steam turbines. And is it, uh, I don't know, uh, Khaled, is this something that you have looked at, if whether to have lots of small. Uh, waste to energy plants are one giant I think mega it's, complex. Uh, as as uh, uh, John Glaude has mentioned, it's more economical to have one plant. Okay. Uh, and, and also for us, all the waste today does go to that one location. 
Uh, so it's more economical to have one larger plant to achieve our target. Okay, and, and from an investment <coughs> point of view, you, you mentioned, Yusuf, that you are aware that there are tenders out for waste to energy facilities around the region mm -hmm. and internationally. Um, how do you decide if you want to invest in a particular project or, or compete to, to, to build and operate a facility? Does it require all of the infrastructure in place that uh, Khaled has described already, you know, the, the collection and the incineration? Or um, do you just look at the facility itself? You know, how, how do you make those decisions? Uh, this, this question also t takes me back again on the question on the efficiency of, uh, of, the, of the technology. In order to have the optimum structure for the project, the optimum cost, you know, technology is one element. So the technology, you need, uh, you need to select the, the, good tech the, the right technology. However, there are other elements that you should look at it, you know, like the commercial structure. You need to have the right commercial structure. Uh, the, then you need to have the right legislation uh, su supporting uh, ah, the, the whole thing. That always comes up. Is so there a problem with legislation? So you, you need to have the, the whole formula together in order to have a successful project. You know, uh, this applies not only for the waste energy projects, it applies for any, any, any project. Sometimes you come across a very good technology. However, the, the risk profile is not uh, that type that will allow you to raise a competitive, uh, competitive financing and will not, with that, with that risk profile, will not be able to attract a competitive equity as well. So all these things should work uh, to, together. So what we have here in, in, in Sharjah, we, we were able to strike a balance between all these elements to the, the structure described by my colleague Khaled. So we, we have a commercial structure where uh, we are using a, a reputable contractor that have a track record in building a project with th similar technology, proven technology, uh, being used many times, have no issues. Then we have uh, the, the offtake agreement by a reputable company uh, in Sharjah, Siwa, that offtakes the electricity. We have a supply, secured supply, uh, with, with the right proper guarantees for, for the waste. Uh, by BS. So we were able to, to have this structure and this allowed us to raise a competitive uh, loan. So, you know, the competitive equity and competitive loan. And all this together allowed us to, to be more, uh, I would say, efficient and optimized. So you need to look at all these things. So when it comes to new market, we will always lo look at these things. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. If you don't have the legislation, if you don't have the right uh, commercial structure, these projects will not make sense. Will not make sense to the investors, will not make sense to the contractors, to the lenders and also will not make sense to the clients. It's interesting, in the, over the past 20 years in the, the Gulf region, um, the PPP model has worked very well in the electricity sector, in the utility sector, because we've had a sovereign uh, feedstock supplier with you know, fixed price and mm. the, the cost base is established and a sovereign fee, uh, offtake agreement in place. So you, you can do the commercial model very successfully. What I think you've described in Sharjah is the, the same arrangement with BIA in place, but not every city will have BIA in place. You will be dealing with maybe a municipality on the waste mm -hmm. collection side, which will be less predictable mm -hmm. than an oil company mm -hmm. providing energy. So does that make it, is there a challenge there about getting that perfect um, storm if you like, it's set up for a PPP. Definitely, definitely. You know, at the end of the day, uh, it has to be balanced. You know, I'm not saying a governmental guarantee is a must. I'm not saying, but at the end of the day, you know, each investor or, con or contractor or lenders will balance the risk and see, and, and uh, you know, based on the risk involved in the deal, you know, you, the reward. What will be so? We'll be always uh, looking at, at this, and in all our future projects, I think it's important that the right legislation need to be there to support uh, minimum requirements of security in terms of uh, of supply and of take of power, supply of waste and of take of power will need to be there in order to make this uh, projects happening. Other than this, I think what the unique thing in our uh, joint venture with BIA that we can provide more than construction operations and financing of the plant itself. Having BIA uh, with us we allows us to provide additional services if that client 
elect to have uh, elect to ask the, the, the bidders like us to provide these services. Okay, so if a tender comes out from a utility for a waste energy plant, you can bid for the tender, but you can also offer extra other services to reach that, whether okay. segregating the waste and so on. Now, these are not in a particular order because they just come in as they come in, but there are two here that I think are quite interesting. So we have seen in this region um, over the past few years a lot of focus on creating jobs for locals and the development of local uh, manufacturing or supply capability. So is this an industry that can create jobs? Uh, you know, how, how much training do you offer? What, what skills are you looking for? Uh, well, first of all, you know, uh, BIA, uh, as we have grown today, we employ over 7,000 people. Uh, and, wow. uh, and we're building the expertise in-house. So a lot of uh, our staff uh, and skill is from this region. Uh, specific to our waste to energy project, we've hired a lot of young graduates, uh, uh, engineers, who are on the project and learning now. Uh, and actually, uh, the person heading the project is also a UAE national. Uh, so, but of course, working with our partners, and we're building the capacity uh, in the region. We do a lot when it comes to training and development. Uh, we have our own training academy that we've established, and this is training from providing training for drivers who collect waste all the way to leadership training. Uh, we also uh, do a lot uh, with the universities in the, in the Emirate of Sharjah. Uh, we invest a lot in research and development with the university. So this is ongoing, and I'm sure also Mosdar does similar things. Uh, so there's a lot of investment going into the human resources and, uh, and the national talent to develop the capabilities in the region. Uh, if I may add to this, of course, when you build a, a plant also on the turbine side, we also, I mean, not only we... We support our, our, uh, our customers with designing and providing the, the technology and the equipment, but also when we build the plant, we provide the long-term maintenance services, and of course with that, we do service these plants locally. So that also creates uh, opportunity as well, because you are, uh, you, know, you are doing this very close to the, to the plant uh, uh, on the local level. As I mentioned at the start, Siemens is a huge global entity and I presume that you are involved in waste to energy facilities in other countries around the world. So what, what are the sort of things that you have seen, the lessons in other markets, the, yeah. the challenges, uh, but also the opportunities, whether it's on the skills side or, you know, what, what can we take from Siemens knowledge? Uh, I think, I mean, you, you know, we, we have done a lot of uh, waste to energy plants at least support on the technology and the equipment side and services around the world. And uh, I, I can think of one good success story maybe we've seen is uh, in Denmark, actually. Uh, you know, Denmark is well known for being a, a very environmentally friendly uh, country or providing uh, the right policies at least to protect the environment. And, uh, and, and if you look, you know, if you think of waste to energy plant in general, I mean, normally people think that is it smelly, is it going to be loud, is it going to be non-hygienic, but you look at this plant in particular, which is uh, called Copenhill uh, Waste Energy Plant, which is in, in Copenhagen, uh, and, and uh, you see that they built this waste energy plant, which is uh, provide clean air, and it's very efficient. It, uh, it's actually reached around 99% efficiency, and it's providing electricity to more than 62,000 households but then they built on top of this plant, they built this ski slope where people actually come and, and, and spend their weekend skiing. So it's very interesting. So you have a waste energy plant in the heart of the city of Copenhagen, and, and it's, uh, it's operating while people are using it as a leisure facility. That's, I mean, I know that you don't represent that particular organization, but why build a ski slope? Is it, did they have too much energy? And they needed, you know, thought, what can we do with this? Or was it to regenerate a part of the city? Oh, yeah, of course, to regenerate. I mean, so of course, to have it close to the city to right. provide the electricity while benefit from the space. Okay. To, to so the ski slope's not essential, but it, <laughs> no. it, it suited the needs of, of Copenhagen. Okay, really? that's, that's fantastic. And so, so there are lots of sort of different ways of thinking about of how course. this can be integrated. Uh, I, let's go back to some questions. Now, I think this is either uh, Khaled for you or Yusuf for you. So it's a two-part question. Is waste to energy really affordable 
uh, in terms of for the consumer in terms of the cost of production when compared to conventional fuel so diesel is referred to here that's the first part of the question so that I think is for you Khaled the second part of the question I think is for you Yusuf what is the payback period for such a waste to energy project so on the first one about the competitive pricing and affordability of this fuel how does it compete I, th I think it has become uh, uh, it is very uh, comparable today and, uh, and competitive uh, and for us actually we look at the total picture of waste it's not just a problem of uh, uh, energy it's also the problem of solving the solving the waste problem so you have to look at it when it comes to waste to energy you don't just look at energy you look at what are you what are the problems you are solving and the value that you are creating? But I think the questioner is that trying to put it from the perspective of the, the consumer. So from a policy uh, point of view... At least yes. here in the region, it's very competitive with, uh, with other sources of energy. I mean, I suppose you put the electricity into the, the grid so it sort of gets yes. uh, absorbed into yes. the wider pricing structure. Yes. Okay, uh, so it's competitive, but from a government point of view or a policy point of view, there are these other benefits like waste and jobs. Yes. Uh, Yusuf, the second part of the question is the payback period for investment. So uh, you have a concession, the, the Emirates uh, Waste to Energy Company has a concession with Sharjah, is, that's 25 years is it or 30 mm -hmm. years? Can you give us any sort of uh, idea of the sort of the, the up, I mean I, you, I, do, I know you can't reveal all sort of commercially sensitive stuff but the, the capital investment and then the payback return? Uh, there is no secret about uh, you know the the, the the financial elements of of, of this type of uh, projects. So we are talking. It's all about the risk involved in, the, in, in, in any investment. It's not about the technology itself uh, or the, the type of the technology. So here we are looking at uh, proven technology. We are looking at uh, commercial structure. We are looking at uh, non-recourse loan that we have in this uh, project. So it's structured in a very good manner. And on top of this, you have uh, a government of take with a high credit rating. The credit rating of the Emirate of Sharjah is, uh, I don't remember, but it's very high credit rating. So with this profile of risk, you know, it's, it's a utility investments where the returns are uh, at the low side. So this is how we look at it. So in, in all our projects, we look at it's it in the it, same we, manner. We've recently at Mead, we've been writing about not enough uh, money being put into infrastructure investment. People, you know, banks like to look shorter term loans into the real estate sector, for example. Is there a challenge I, finding I don't finance? Think, I don't, not at all, not at all. UAE and GCC in general attracting a lot of investments and finance in this sector. So know, there's no the, lack of liquidity you know, or finance? All of us hear about the big success in Abu Dhabi, in Dubai, in Saudi Arabia, and the success in Sharjah. So all these states have very strong, very good uh, credit okay. rating. And when, when they invest in projects that have uh, reasonable risk, you know, in, in technology and, 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 and other, other parts of, of the, the commercial structure, uh, these states are able to attract very competitive financing and very competitive investments. So if, okay. if I may add to yes. that, of course, we as Siemens also, we have the Siemens Financial Services. And we are very interested as, as well. Oh, in so the, Siemens provides financing as yes. well as technology. Yes, of course. And I think we worked uh, in the charge that was on this project. By, yes, by uh, by Siemens Financial and Services. Do you do that as an equity investor in in a project or as a lender or how? No, do more as a lender, uh, but also in, in in the future projects we we do support with financing, uh, spe especially in, you know when we have our technology uh, in the works. So we cover at least the part of. Uh, uh, also the, 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 the scope that, that we are offering uh, in terms of financing as well. So um, this is from an electrical engineer. Now, I, I think it's probably for you, Khaled. Um, Jean-Claude referred to 100 million tonnes a year of waste created in the GCC. How much of this uh, can be used for waste to energy conversion? What sort of, of the 100 million tonnes, what percentage can go? Uh, and then what kinds of waste are you targeting? Uh, now, for example, our facility in Sharjah, uh, the capacity of this facility uh, is 300,000 tons uh, of waste per annum. Uh, and uh, the 300,000 tons, again, it depends on how much waste each city is able to recover. So it depends, each city has different policies. We're able to recover 76% of the waste in the Emirate of Sharjah. So the balance, we're taking it to waste to energy. Other cities might recover less or more. And the balance goes to, so it's, uh, it all depends on the infrastructure put in place to recover that waste.
So in uh, theory, 100% can be used for in waste theory, to energy. In more theory, more or less in theory. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, for us, it's to get as much value out of that before you take it to the waste to energy. So, so a more um, yes. strategic approach is yes. from a top-down level to say this is better going recycled into exactly. construction. Exactly. Exactly. And so it's impossible to put a single yes. figure on. Yeah. So each okay. each city will 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 have different uh, targets. Okay, and uh, sorry, I, 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 in all the numbers, I might. Yeah. What percentage of the waste in Sharjah currently goes to waste to energy? Uh, right now, it's it's uh, just over twenty percent will go will go to this facility. As I said, this facility, the capacity is three hundred thousand tons, and will generate around thirty megawatts of power, which is enough to to power as much as twenty eight thousand homes. So three hundred thousand tons. That's over what time period? Over One year. Over one year, Over one okay, year. and that can create 30 megawatts. 30 megawatts of power. For how many homes? Uh, which is enough to power around 28,000 homes. Okay, thank you. What is the smallest possible setup required to pre-treat and convert to power? So I guess this is about the scalability and efficiency. So, so waste to energy. Uh, so I think we're talking about the small, yeah, yeah. for, for the, the uh, yeah. processing, the incineration yeah. and then the generation. What's, yeah. the, what's a sort of optimum or minimum size? Uh, well, I think uh, there are small facilities there. Uh, right. There's very small facilities. So maybe that's a question, maybe, John Claude. I mean, we can, uh, I, th I think the, uh, I mean, we, we, we make steam turbines from the smaller size to all the way to 200 megawatt. But uh, I think to make sense economically, it probably it has to be at least, I'm not the expert here, but it yeah. could be between 20 and 30 megawatt to make sense. Yeah. I think from an investment perspective, I'm yeah. just taking a guess here, yeah. but maybe this gentleman can, can elaborate more on that. But, uh, Yusuf, do you have a, a opinion? Smaller the size, uh, the cost is higher. You know, if you okay. go small, because a lot of fixed cost uh, is included to, to, to structure such projects. So the bigger, bigger the project, uh, it's more cost effective. Okay. So the, the 30 megawatt power plant that we have in Sharjah, mm -hmm. that is at the, potentially at the smaller end of what what we could be seeing. So as yeah. this sector grows, yeah. Yeah. it's not not the smallest. It's yeah. a medium size. Yeah, it's not medium a small size, plant, but uh, but it is the first in the region. Yeah. Presumably, uh, as you get yeah. bigger, it becomes a question yeah. of f yeah. feedstock. Uh, mm -hmm. It depends how much waste you're able to recover. Yeah. 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 Okay. And and presume can you go to old landfill sites and and take out waste? It is possible, but it's exp uh, very expensive. So okay. this is a, this is a, 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 an analysis based on the land, uh, what value that land is versus recovering and removing that waste. Right. And I presume that stuff that's been in the ground for a long time decomposes into chemicals that are nasty and things like that as well, I guess. Okay, so we have another question here. This is from um, a research engineer in Saudi Arabia. Um, and I think, uh, Jean-Claude, for you, what sort of technology is applied uh, in waste to energy? Uh, is it incineration or gasification? So I don't know if... No, I, I think that's a question. Maybe not. To, we don't. We don't do that part of the, the okay. plant. I think that's uh, companies like uh, yeah. you know Knim or or, uh, or some okay. other company can. Yeah. And maybe Does, I should. So I, I, I don't have yeah. enough knowledge. I about think it. you know there there is different technologies out there for waste to energy, but the most common yeah. technology that's been used uh, is incineration. Uh, yes, there is a gasification. Is also uh, another technology. Uh, but uh, today, incineration is the most common technology uh, uh, that is trialed and tested. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now we have another question, uh, another engineer. So a lot of engineers watching today, which is fantastic. Um, do you feel that putting the onus on segregation of the waste uh, will reduce the burden on utilities? Uh, and will help encourage people to reduce waste. So um, I guess, Khaled, this is a sort of public policy point of view. You're putting a lot of emphasis on strategic segregation of waste. Mm. Have we seen any evidence that it changes people's behavior? Uh, well, this is a process that in our region has started quite recently, uh, and it takes time. Here in the UAE, the challenge also that we have is we have people and nationalities from all over. Uh, and. Uh, uh, we have an educational program, an awareness program that starts at the schools. We have the BS School of Environment, so we try to teach the, uh, the, the kids at a young age how they should segregate. Uh, and we're starting to see the results right now. Uh, the, the cleaner the waste that you can get, uh, the, the more value that you can 
uh, attain and the, the, you become more cost effective in managing your waste. So right now, yes, we do have a, a material recovery facility which segregates, but the, when we get the waste cleaner and it's been segregated, we can get much more value from the uh, value chain. Okay, thank you. Yusuf, if I can come to you now, we, you talked earlier about international opportunities for investment, so I think this question relates to that. Uh, what, are, what are the plans to reduce the generation of waste in the region? So perhaps you could tell us about who's putting out tenders for these plants and maybe uh, not just on waste to energy but on waste management generally. Are there any policies uh, which have been framed for this, so banning plastic, compulsory segregation of waste, etc.? Actually, so maybe, if, uh, actually, Khaled, I'll start yeah. with you on this question uh, yeah, about the, uh, what, what's going on okay. around the region. So, first of all, the UAE has put a target. There is a UAE national agenda that has put a target that the UAE, by 2021, 75% of all waste must be yeah. uh, diverted away from landfill. So, you see across the UAE, uh, from the different Emirates to the Ministry of Environment, all are taking actions. Uh, and and uh, we know uh, the Emirate of Dubai, Emirate of Abu Dhabi have all taken directions to also look at ways to energy, including the Northern Emirates. So it is happening in the region, and and uh, and I believe it's the same thing is happening across the GCC. So so we, we will start hearing similar targets. Uh, I know in, in Saudi Arabia a lot of recent announcements have happened uh, regarding waste management and uh, so... And Saudi you must be the big, I mean, the, there's some massive cities in Saudi Arabia uh, yes. and obviously it's a, the biggest population yeah. in the region, yeah. in the GCC region. Yeah, as, a, as, a, as a matter of fact, I mean, uh, in Saudi they have actually set up a target by 2030 to have 3 gigawatts, 3,000 megawatts of electricity being produced from, from waste. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, really? if you want to think three gigawatt, that's enough to power Lebanon, the whole country wow. of Lebanon. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's quite a bit of yeah. uh, uh, good use of uh, 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 you know, taking that. Uh, and so does, does Saudi Arabia in its target, does it specify, I mean, I don't know how the waste to energy market is segmented. Do you have different feedstocks or something? But do they say the, <coughs> the geographies of where those plants will be or the fuels or is it not that it, uh, far advanced yet? I don't have that details, but okay. I know that they've set up a, a very so good target because they also, uh, according to a study, they contribute to about 50% of the annually generated waste in the so Gulf countries. So they have... So, they can't be quite a yeah, bit. So to, to add to that, you know, the opportunities for waste uh, to energy facilities across the region, there is, uh, you see it happening now. And I think, you know, through this joint venture, you know, Mustar is a leader, regional leader, and an international leader in clean energy. We are a regional leader in waste management who are now building the first waste to energy plant in the region. So we feel. We see these opportunities and yeah. we are looking at expanding outside the UAE to target these opportunities. So, I mean, Saudi Arabia, Mazdar is already sort of beginning investments in Saudi in the solar side. So, three gigawatts by 2030, that, that must be number one for you as an international market or a regional market. For we're starting with our first project. It's a 400 megawatt wind. But we're starting with the wind. Sorry, it's wind. I said solar. Yeah, and, uh, but, uh, of course, we hope to expand in, in solar and we hope to expand to Emirates Waste to Energy uh, company in, in the field of waste to energy. So, of course, Saudi is an important market uh, where we feel it can provide mm -hmm. us the right size to grow. Uh, we are looking at opportunities, possib possible opportunities in, uh, in Jordan, in Egypt, in, the, in Oman. Uh, internationally, we looked at things, uh, potential things in, uh, in, in Indonesia. But our focus will be always to start regionally and grow regionally. And uh, on an opportunistic basis, we'll be looking at uh, opportunities all over the world. So at the moment, you have the plant in Sharjah with, with Bia, and then you have established the the Emirates Waste to Energy Company. Yes. Um, are there any tenders being issued at the moment that you're looking at? And where, where are they? Are they in the UAE? Uh, or? I don't think anything formally or issued. Uh, uh, yeah, there is, there is going to be in the UAE as well as in the region. It's happening right now. Now, as BIA and waste management, we, we already have a presence in Saudi. We, we already operate in Dubai and, and Abu Dhabi. So, so within waste management, we're already uh, a regional player. Okay, and when you say operate, this is not advisory, you actually got no, people for, on the ground yes, with trucks and for, collection. For, and for example, here in Dubai, most of the iconic landmarks, we are managing the waste, including Burj Khalifa. In Abu Dhabi, for example, we have more than 1,000 people working in Abu Dhabi. Uh, only wow. last month, we started our first operation in Saudi for the collection of waste. 
uh, where is that uh, in Jeddah so in Saudi so uh, and we have an office in Riyadh so we are looking at Saudi is a big market I mean, Jeddah must be the number one target because it's famously it's sort of it's expanded over so many centuries along the mm -hmm. coast mm -hmm. And they've had problems with traffic and with waste and all of that. So Jeddah must be... Yeah. So we've just started fun. and we're looking at the region. The okay. Opportunities. Um, should the government uh, be doing more to incentivize uh, waste to energy through uh, feed-in tariffs or gate fees? We, would you like to see more? Uh, uh, I think, you know, the, again, part of the success of what BIA has done in Sharjah is the, the company structure, being a, a, a PPP, a public-private partnership, uh, you need support from the government. Uh, and, and this has allowed BIA to, to lead in this segment. So definitely you need support from the government uh, and, and you need to look at gate fees to make uh, this project more feasible. Okay, so great. That's, um, we would like to see more government uh, um, incentives. Jean-Claude, you mentioned Lebanon earlier, so I'm going to put this question to you. I don't know if you can answer it. You may, you may not be able to answer it. Um, European countries are reducing the number of incineration plants. Is it the best solution to start incineration plants in Lebanon as a primary solution? So I don't know why this person has raised Lebanon as a specific issue. Uh, and what do you think the best solution to solve uh, Lebanon's waste problem? So it's very focused on that market. Yeah. You, maybe uh, you don't know. No, no I'm, I'm a little bit familiar with that. Uh, uh, Lebanon, there has been a discussion on using this generation technology, actually, because Lebanon does have a big challenge when it comes to uh, waste and being dumped to, to landfills. And there are a lot of discussion on that, you know, using this technology. And, you know, Lebanon also has a challenge on the, uh, on the, on the electricity generation side. So it will really serve both purposes to to uh, uh, overcome the challenge of what to do the waste, as well as support the, the Ministry of Energy with uh, electricity as well. Yes, there, there are some discussion I'm familiar with that in Lebanon about uh, how to deal with this, and maybe one of the options they're looking at is, is, is the incineration. Okay. Just can add yes. uh, one thing here. Uh, the, the question it mentions uh, Europe is reducing incineration. I think this is incorrect or inaccurate. Okay. So what we are talking about here, the incineration technology which we are using, is actually reducing the emission of greenhouse gases. It's not emitting greenhouse; it reduces the emissions. You know, because uh, the alternative or the baseline that you have it with the with the with the landfill is to emit to degradate and emit uh, methane gas. The methane gas, the impact of methane gas as a greenhouse gas is 20, 21 times the impact of CO2 that you produce uh, from incineration. So the incineration projects that we are doing, the waste energy projects, are reducing the emission of greenhouse gases. Very, okay, that's very a very good answer. Very important point, yes. Okay, so there's a, a, a false perception in the question about uh, yeah. policy towards the incineration. Very quickly, this is from a banker. Uh, how are your projects financed? Are banks involved? So you partly answered so this. We, we, we raised uh, 163 million uh, US dollar uh, debt. Uh, so we have a mix of lenders, uh, so from uh, UAE we have uh, uh, Abu Dhabi Development Fund is involved, we have Abu Dhabi Commercial Bank, we have uh, Commercial Bank of Dubai also involved, internationally from Japan we have SMBC, we also have uh, our colleagues uh, from Siemens Financial Services financing this project. So we have a mix of lenders from all over the world. Okay, thank you very much. Now, this is a question from a, a university student who describes themselves as, as not currently being employed. So po it's a great question. So possibly there is a, a, a job opportunity uh, down the line. So what is done with the residue from the waste to energy plant? So there, there must be waste from, from the waste to energy. What, what do you do with that? Uh, th that is now, there's a small percentage which is used more in construction projects and roads. Okay, and so what is it, ash or ash? What, it's yeah, ash. Yeah. So it's used as um, fill material for construction mm. projects. Okay. So at the end of the whole cycle, 100% of everything is serving a purpose. Yes. Okay, nothing is going to landfill. Um, okay, now, uh, perhaps Jean-Claude, this one is for you. This is about substations. My so what... Um, what are the substation requirements? Uh, maybe it's not for you. What are the substation requirements for Sharjah Waste to Energy Plant? Uh, 
And how do you get the power from the source onto the grid? So is this where Siemens, does Siemens come in here or is this back to uh, no, Khaled? I think, uh, you know, we have, we have uh, I th the question is what are the substation requirements? I think this is a little more details because I need to know more about uh, the, the generation side and everything. So, but we do provide the technology for that and uh, we have a big install base actually in Sharjah that's a substation made by Siemens. But specifically, what is the, for this one in particular, I don't have that details. Okay, no. Khaled, can you answer anything? Uh, I think this is something, again, the Emirates Waste to Energy Company is working with uh, Siwa on that. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I don't know if this is relevant. Do most people set aside kitchen waste for compost? Is that, I don't kitchen know. or you mean uh, food waste? Uh, I, I presume it's food waste. It says kitchen yes. waste here. I'm guessing yes, so, it's food so waste. So food waste uh, or, uh, is uh, organic waste, let's say, call it organic waste. Uh, what we do is we're looking at composting that waste. Okay. And then use it for so agriculture. So you collect it. People don't do it privately or generally they don't. You will collect yeah. it. No, and we will collect it. it and then we would compost it, yeah. Now, we've, we've, we do have a compost facility. Okay, yeah. excellent. Yeah. Um, we're coming really to the end of time, and there's a question here that I should have perhaps asked, um, and I'm going to put it to you, Yusuf. We should have had this at the beginning. What is the biggest challenge for waste to energy facilities in the Middle East? I think I think is on the, on the approach how we look at the, at waste to energy. We need to factor in all the elements of of the project. We need to factor in uh, the, the the cost of avoiding uh, avoiding the waste, avoiding the landfill, the cost of the land itself, and then we include the, the cost of electricity that we produce. If we have that holistic view to waste to energy, I think. Uh, this will lead to have the right legislation to encourage uh, waste energy. Products. So the biggest challenge is that breaking down the traditional silos and having a, not just looking at it on a cost per kilowatt yes. basis, but the social benefit, the, the whole benefit. carbon benefit. Yeah. This one is about uh, materials recovery. So uh, Khaled, if materials recovery is a big part of the process, would waste segregation at source benefit or improve the entire process significantly? and then how do you enforce residents' compliance? So is yes. it better to do the waste segregation at the, 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 the uh, consumer end yes. or at the central facility? Uh, it's actually, uh, we started with the facility first, uh, but today we are now doing it at source. But uh, uh, right, uh, right now, uh, we are not enforcing it, uh, and, uh, and w we are providing the tools for people to segregate and providing the awareness. Uh, and we are seeing a lot of acceptance and people are helping. But de definitely, if it's done at source, there is more value for us. And is there anything um, BIA can do as a private entity to encourage compliance with We that? do a lot of that. We actually go house to house and provide awareness kits uh, and explain to the residents of how to segregate. So we have a team that that's all that they do. Uh, they do. Plus, we provide the programs at schools and general awareness outreach programs on how to segregate. Well, gentlemen, we've, we've come to the end of our time. Um, it just remains to thank our wonderful panelists. That's been a fantastic discussion. It's great to have such in engagement from the audience. It, it shows how important this is. Um, uh, Jean-Claude Nasser, Khalid al Huraimel, and Yusuf Al-Ali, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. And thank you, thank you uh, for joining us today. Um, and I look forward to seeing you at the next Meet Live. Thank you. Thank you.